Today on The Breakfast, we continue our discussion on the suit filed by Serap on the Federal High Court asking the federal government to account for the spending of $460 million Chinese loan secured to fund the failed CCTV project in Abuja. What is the current status of that project? What stalled it for a decade after while we are still servicing the loan? That's part of what we'll be taking a look at today on The Breakfast is the Technophile Edition. We'll also be taking a look at Off the Press as we take a look at some of the headlines on some national dailies with our analysts who will be joining us this morning. Good morning. A very pleasant morning to you. I am Maureen Menong. It's a great Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I hope you had a wonderful night rest. Well, today our theme is Nigeria could lead in technological innovation with the right investment. Indeed, we do know that developed and developing economies lie on heavily on technology. And so if Nigeria is going to move to the next level, if Nigeria is going to diversify from mono economy, uh, it has to tie its uh, growth to efficient uh, science and technological innovation. Nigeria is the third most technologically advanced country in Africa, but 113th globally. So Nigeria needs to pump money into research and development. We really do have to move from being a mono economy, especially as we can see that... Um, Countries are moving away from crude. The price of crude is definitely depreciating. It will depreciate with time. And so if we have to be, remain relevant and boost our economy, we do need to diversify. Of course, we do have the NACENI, that's the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, uh, which has recently been tasked to prioritize need for oriented products such as electric cars, microchips, solar cells, among others. And there is no doubt that NACENI needs to synergize with polytechnics, universities, research institutions, and embrace individuals who have been bold enough to come up with some innovations, some technological innovations. From time to time, we hear people break out in different parts of the country with some very unique innovations. And oftentimes we hear that those people have reached out to some relevant government authorities, but they were neglected. They were not considered in any way, shape or form. Uh, we need to be having a, a change in that narrative. Uh, Nigerians in charge of such ministries should be um, sensitive enough to embrace Nigerians whose brains are hot, as we put it in local parlance, people whose brains are hot, uh, who are innovating things here and there, and see how those people can be funded, how research can be done into what they are coming up with, because that's how you build them, that's how you develop them. So that's the theme for today. Nigeria could lead the world in technological innovation with the right investments. Well, our top trending today, we have two top trending. A court dismisses OB's application for live broadcast. We know what's happening and playing out at the PEPC. Uh, Justice Samani has said that the application uh, there by the LP and the PDP uh, lack merits, and so they are not granting that request. Uh, they've also said that that such... Uh, a request, if they were to grant such a request, it should have been planned for and budgeted for and drawing references from other countries that you don't just wake up and decide to do a live broadcast. It should have been planned for, should have been uh, budgeted for, and so it cannot be allowed without the necessary policies or framework to uh, support it. So that's our very first top trend in court dismisses OB's application for live broadcast. The second top trending is resident doctors calling off their warning strike. They resumed work yesterday, and they have said that um, they're going to go and work for two weeks, after which they would 
review government's response to the MOU that they signed because they did sign an MOU with the federal government. And so two weeks to go back to work and then check if government has responded to the agreement they signed. If not, they may have to continue their strike because they describe it as a suspended it's suspended. The strike is suspended. It's not cancelled. So we just keep uh, fingers crossed, hoping that the federal government would respond accordingly because we cannot afford to have our work uh, doctors going on strike. Uh, it's just not something we want to play with. Their roles in the society cannot be overemphasized. We need them working 247 to save lives. That's what they're trained to do. Doctors are trained to save lives, and they should be made um, comfortable while they are doing that. All right, so that's the much we can take on our top trending. We'll give you the weather report and then come back to take a look at the headlines. Do stay with us. It is a Technophile edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. <laughs>